Well, good morning and welcome to the show. Jeff Beals at your service. We are brought to you by Dingman's Collision Center, along with Cheer Athletics, the nation's number one all-star cheer gym. And uh, we are the only show in the metro area that will talk about the things we talk about, which is the growth and development of your favorite city, business expansion, real estate, construction, economic development. If you're a fan of Omaha, if you're excited about how it's growing and developing, you are going to enjoy the next hour. Without any further ado, though, it's time to bring on my co-host, a man who is a legendary real estate deal maker and all around well-known fellow in town, Trenton Maggot. You underestimate me. Well, I thought I was uh, overestimating you. Oh, at any rate, in so many ways. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Trenton Maggot at your service with Jeff Beals on the long-running Grow Omaha show. Yeah, we've got uh, all sorts of exciting things planned for you today. A couple big news items. Uh, we're going to feature uh, a couple businesses uh, in the uh, the second uh, segment. And then we're going to be talking about the Commercial Real Estate Summit later in the show. And, of course, as always, we will finish with our uh, Perkins Kreitzer Construction Lightning Round at the end. want to give you a reminder, though, uh, to... To, to do something with your daily routine. Like every morning I wake up and, and one of the first things I do is I check the weather. And then I check uh, Wall Street Journal. I have a couple things that I check. Well, one of those things that I check every single morning is growomaha.com. And you want to do that too, because we're putting news on growomaha.com every day. And so you don't have to wait for the show on Saturday. You don't have to wait for our very popular newsletter on Thursday afternoons. Anytime you want an update about what's going on, just go to gromaha.com, make it part of your daily routine, and, and you will keep up with what's happening. And, and you wouldn't believe the amount of, of news items we're putting on there. And there's more to come. So let's get straight into the news of the week, Trenton. And the news, as always, is brought to you by Eagle Mortgage, eaglemortgagecompany.com. Uh, they have been in the business for north of 30 years, and they will work with you for your conventional loans, your FHA, your VA loans, some of the specialty loans. They do those as well. But if you are thinking about buying a house, one of the first things you want to do is contact a mortgage broker at Eagle Mortgage. Holly Schneidewind leads the team, but it's a very good and talented team. And uh, talk to them. T explain what you want to do. They'll go through your situation. Uh, they'll take you through the process. They're kind of like mortgage counselors almost, if you will. And as a mortgage broker, they shop the market. They're not beholden to one bank, so they get the best deal for you. Eagle Mortgage is located at 114th and Davenport, or you can find them online at eaglemortgagecompany.com. Well, Trenton, um, last week, we talked to everyone about uh, the uh, planned hospital at the University of Nebraska Medical Center, Nebraska Medicine, and we knew this was coming. Uh, it's been talked about for a couple years right now. It's part of Project Next, uh, which is a multi-billion dollar project. It's only one part of it. But this hospital by itself will be $2.2 billion. And I will say that on Thursday at the Board of Regents meeting, uh, the Regents approved the initial $50 million design phase. And so this goes, uh, you know, this goes toward the design and some, some, some basic starting costs to get this thing going. It's going to be on the southeast corner of Farnham Street and Saddle Creek Road. But last week, you'll recall, you and I were kind of uh, scratching our heads a little bit about one specific statistic about it. One of the vice chancellors at UNMC had publicly said before last week, this thing is going to be 380 to 400 feet tall, which would make it currently the third tallest building in Omaha. And, and even after the mutual tower is done, the fourth tall. So big, big building. We said, how could that possibly be? We've got some more information. And I think it really is going to be about 380 to 400 feet tall. What's the floor plate? Well, I'm looking at a rendering right now. First of all, this will be, uh, if it's anywhere near this rendering, and the only place that I've found it is on uh, KETV's website so far. And if, if this rendering ends up being, and, and if you look at it, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to, you know, it's very plain right now. It's just like white, you know, they, they don't really have a lot of detail on it. But if it ends up looking like this, this will be... One of the most massive uh, buildings anywhere in the state. I mean, we're talking about 
I think 1.4 million square feet, and and that's the, that's bigger than uh, West Roads. Yeah, bigger, more square footage than the West Roads. That's, that's bigger than Union Pacific. Yeah, I think that's Union Pacific than, was one little over one million square feet. Yeah, and what UP. Uh, headquarters ever since it opened has always been the biggest office building in Nebraska by square footage. This will be a lot more. Of course, it's not an office building. But when you're looking at the rendering now, uh, you, you may you may be able to picture that area, big grassy area southeast of Farnham and Saddle Creek Road. The Monroe Meyer Institute was there for many, many years. J.P. Lord Elementary School was there for many, many years. Both of those have been completely removed, so it's just a big open grassy area. This rendering basically fills that entire area, which is probably the equivalent of, what, three or four city blocks maybe? And so it's on this huge pedestal. And then the pedestal kind of almost tears up, uh, kind of pyramid-like toward the middle. And then on top of that sits what appears to be about another 15 to 18 stories. And they're going to be hospital stories. Uh, Hospital stories have to have really high ceilings. So yeah, basically you're going to have something that'll be about the height of the state capitol building boom right on the med center campus. But more importantly than that, uh, it'll do a um, um, huge service to uh, patients in Nebraska and and do a, a great deal to the economy. So what happens next? They start doing all of the preparation stuff as part of this $50 million approval from the regents. It might not be till after 2030, though, before this thing opens. It's going to be a long project. Yeah, I remember in $2.2 billion was a lot of money. Billion here, billion there. Pretty soon you're talking about real money. That was uttered by some Congress member back in the... I think late 80s, or early 90s. Yeah. And uh, and now a billion dollars is worth even less. All right, let's uh, get into a couple of our other news items as well. Uh, we announced this week on uh, Gralmaha.com that Olson, which is a civil engineering firm, um, is going to be building a four-story office building uh, in uh, the Hartwood Preserve area, which is uh, just a little bit southwest. Actually, it's right southwest of 144th and Dodge. Actually, they'll be occupying two floors of it initially, maybe the second and third, and then the fourth, eventually, probably. And then the first floor will be retail as part of the, the Lanahaw's uh, developments plan as part of a Hartwood Preserve. What do they call it? The square or something like that? Oh, the, the center of Hartwood Preserve? Yeah. And I don't recall the actual name of that part of it, but Hartwood Preserve itself is a 500-acre development um, that uh, already has quite a bit on it. So the Valmont World Headquarters is there. Uh, Union Bank has a very nice office building there. Uh, Carson has a very attractive six-story office building there. The new Charleston's the new mahogany. Union Bank. Uh, yeah, Union Bank mentioned that. And then... Um, Gunderson Jewelry is going to have a flagship store opening there very soon. There's going to be a building that's going to have uh, an upscale cigar bar and restaurant. And lots of parks and and trails. Yeah, so it's a nice area. So this middle part that the Olson building is going to anchor, I've been told, is going to be somewhat similar to Exarban Village. In that it'll be walkable, like you know, Trent indicated, the the ground floor of this building will be uh, retail, so it kind of create kind of that urban environment. And uh, completion of this new building, which hasn't really even started, will be summer of 2026, so two-year project. If you want to see a picture of it, uh, just go to growomaha.com and go to the uh, news stories, the featured stories section, and there is a rendering of that building on there at this time. Uh, White Lotus, a local developer, is uh, seeking uh, $2.6 million in tax increment financing for a planned mixed-use building, 12th and Nicholas, in the Millwork Commons District. The planning board this week approved that TIF application. Going to be five stories, 78 apartments, uh, a little over 12,000 square feet of retail commercial space. So this is... Some of you might be used uh, familiar with the Dizzy Mule, which is a big mixed-use multifamily thing directly north a couple blocks from Charles Schwab Field. This is just a block east of that. So that area is really coming along. I agree. 
Thank you for that contribution. All right, we are going to take our first break of the hour. And when we come back, we're going to bring on the father-daughter duo of Jim Morrison and Anna Morrison. Uh, We are going to talk a little bit about um, Stratus Building Solutions. We're going to be talking about uh, uh, car sales and and just going to kind of have fun time featuring a couple of local businesses with uh, a couple people that we're good friends with and you will enjoy getting to know. So you're listening to Grow Omaha. It is brought to you by Dingman's Collision Center along with Cheer Athletics and we'll be back in a moment right after this on News Radio 1110 KFAB. And welcome back to the show. Jeff Beals at your service along with my good friend Trenton Maggot. We are brought to you by Dingman's Collision Center along with Cheer Athletics. Cheer Athletics is the nation's number one all-star cheer gym. If you're not familiar with all-star cheer, check into it. It is very competitive, a very athletic form of cheerleading competitions all over the country and the world. In 2028, it's going to be an Olympic sport. Well, uh, the the Cadillac, the the coup de grace of all-star cheer companies or organizations is Cheer Athletics. Started in Dallas. Uh, They got about 14 locations nationwide. Uh, The most important one is right here in Omaha. And as we uh, broke the story a couple weeks ago, in a couple of years, they're going to be moving to a brand new state-of-the-art, double-the-size facility in Gretna near 192nd and Highway 370. has to be built because right now uh, the area is just being developed, but it is going to be so nice. In the meantime, they're at Highways 50 and 370 just southwest of there in Papillion. They're so exclusive that Cheer Athletics uh, denied Jeff and I's uh, admission. We didn't qualify for it, but uh, we're sure that if you want to get your kid or grandkid involved in all-star cheer, uh, they will probably be a lot more receptive. I uh, applied for the top of the pyramid. Than the time when Trent tried to be at the top of the pyramid. God help us. All right. We are going to... um, uh, do our business feature. We do our business features periodically. And today we have a, a father-daughter uh, team with us, uh, a couple good friends of ours. Uh, Jim Morrison is with Stratus, which is um, the fastest growing um, commercial cleaning service in the country. And his daughter, Anna Morrison, is the general manager of Audi Omaha, part of the Baxter family of dealerships. Jim and Anna, welcome to the show. Good morning. Thank you. So, uh, so we go, we go way back and, and I'll start with you, Jim. Um, we had you on the show probably, I don't know, eight or 10 years ago. Yeah, long time. And you used to be with, uh, for a long time, the corporate version of Stratus Building Solutions. And, uh, and you were talking to us a little bit about some stuff related to office buildings and that industry way back when. You're now um, with the Omaha operation of Stratus Building back, Solutions. Yeah, back with Omaha. So tell us a little bit about what the company does. Well, actually, Stratus Building Solutions is the, uh, as you said, the industry's fastest growing commercial cleaning service. We're a franchise-based organization, which means that uh, throughout the system, the crews that come out to clean the clients are actually Stratus business owners. So with that ownership aspect, that franchise aspect, you always have a much higher degree of accountability, attention to detail, professionalism, consistency. That's what's really contributed to our growth throughout the last 15 years. Uh, we, in the last 10 years, we've gone from 26 regions across America to 72 across America and Canada. So it's really been phenomenal growth, really rapid growth. And I was with the corporate team for about 10 years. I know you travel a lot. Can I have some of your airline miles? I, you know, as soon as I see you on top of the pyramid, you can have all of the airline miles. Just if that's what it takes for him to stop being on top of the pyramid. <laughs> awesome. How big is the Omaha office? The Omaha office, uh, revenue-wise, uh, well, d- you, if you want to tell that, that's fine. Sure. Well, I mean, the Omaha office has a staff of nine people and currently forty-two active unit franchise owners. So, so Stratus cleans office buildings. Retail? Do they do bars and restaurants? Or Every, they- yeah, absolutely. Uh, if you will, everything from daycares to surgical centers. Uh, we clean the Methodist headquarters. That's uh, a lot of specialized uh, cleaning. Even churches. Yeah. Yeah. So, 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 Jim, uh, talk to us a little bit about that that business because you know we do have a lot of listeners who own companies, run companies, or the man- office manager of, of some company. 
Is it uh, what all is involved when you have to switch cleaning services at your office or your place of business? Believe it or not, that's one of the main reasons people don't switch because uh, unfortunately they've had that experience where it's been a, a cumbersome process. Uh, with our approach to uh, the business model, we actually make it as seamless as you possibly can. Uh, the uh, the big thing that people worry about is that they're just you know training one for another. So what we try to do on the initial site visit, the initial discovery meeting, is we actually try to discover can we be of some benefit or some resource to this particular type of client. We're not for every single type of client. We like to think we can be for the majority, but that's part of the discovery process is to find out, can we be of some resource? If so, how? And what would the transition look like? Okay, well, let's uh, let's bring on um, a different Morrison uh, <laughs> into the discussion. Anna Morrison, you guys, uh, father-daughter team, and you both have a, a background now in sales, and we thought it'd be kind of fun to keep it in the family. And uh, I had to tell you, I still appreciate you selling me my son's car uh, a couple years ago. It, Absolutely. It's, Absolutely. It's, doing, it's doing great for him. But uh, at any rate, uh, Anna, you're, part, you're, you're the general manager of Audi Omaha, which is located uh, just north of Village Point, right? Yes, it is. It's on Burt Street. Uh, we're kind of in that auto row you know where that is um, just north of Village Point. Yeah, it's kind of um, it's kind of like Omaha's auto, you know, headquarters anymore. I mean, there've been so many dealers and and a lot of upscale dealers that have gone into that area, but Audi Omaha is uh, part of Baxter, which uh, you know, a lot of people know that Baxter name in Omaha because they have so many uh, dealerships here, but a lot of people don't probably realize that Baxter is way more than Omaha, just happens to be headquartered here. Tell us a little bit about the Baxter organization. Absolutely. So we actually have locations in Olathe, as well as Colorado Springs, and um, recently Madison, Wisconsin. So we are continually growing. Um, I think what we really look for is that manufacturer that's going to be a great partner to us for our guests. Yeah, and we happen to know Mickey Anderson, and I I had met Tal Anderson, his father, who started the company, and um, used to work with Johnny Baxter, but it was really Tal Anderson's vision for that Village Point uh, Auto Row or whatever you call it, but that was really pioneering from 168th to 180th Street on the north side, uh, and people were like, wow, he's way out there, and, and uh, so it's, it's, it's pretty cool vision, and, and to see it come and to fruition and all your different brands and everything else, and uh, it, it, it's a great organization, and, and uh Audi, your building is one of the newest, isn't it? I would say it is. Um, we've, there's been a lot of remodeling done at a lot of our locations just to kind of upgrade the, the stores in general. Um, but, but Tal had kind of a, a vision for what that experience looks like as well. Um, so when we talk about the guest experience, we've kind of revolutionized that in a big way recently. Um, so when you think about traditional car buying, right? You think, okay, well, I'm going to have a salesperson and then I'm going to go see the finance manager, et cetera. You kind of passed around. Maybe it's going to take a couple of hours. Um, but what we've done recently is we've kind of taken that guesswork out of it. So what we've done is we've said, hey, we're just going to have you with one person. So your sales consultant can take you through the entire process. That way you're not seeing multiple people throughout the entire car deal. Um, it just kind of takes that uh, the time frame out of the out of the question and, and just helps elevate the guest experience. I know exactly well. what you're talking about, Anna, because I've I've bought a few uh, a few dozen cars in my just life. Just a couple, at least and, a few. And yeah, trends are they, they kind folks. of hand you off to the to each person through through each process, and you don't really know where to go. But to have kind of like a advocate or somebody that can guide you is is a great thing. Plus, they've really updated the. Uh, the customer lounges and the free food and everything else. I, I pretty much eat for free during the week. <laughs> That's why you buy so many cars. Yeah. It's a lot of free food. It's good. So uh, this is a serious question. Um, so you have that Village Point Auto Mall type area where there's so many uh, dealers and, and many of them are Baxter. But then the, uh, the the state puts a DMV right there. Was that a pure accident, or was or or did I don't did pure I did, convenience? Did Baxter you know? lobby for that to get that there? <laughs> I can't I can't speak to that, but I will say it is convenient. <laughs> I mean, it is perfect. It is right there. All right, before we go, 
Um, let's ask you that you guys a little father daughter question. So here we have uh, a father and daughter, two different businesses that are both heavily involved in in the sales business. Jim has uh, been doing sales of of office cleaning contracts um, nationwide for many years now here in Omaha. Anna, car dealerships are all about moving cars. Is there? Is, I mean, did you raise her to be like a, a salesperson just like you? No, I. We, she has two brothers, Matthew and Eamon. Matter of fact, Eamon took me through that car buying experience when he sold me my truck a couple of months ago. Uh, but Annie, I was the last one that I would ever expect to get into sales. And what, as the proud papa, I can say that in five and a half years, she's gone from the sales guy, if you will, the salesperson, up to GM of Audi Omaha. That is immensely proud. proud so I'm just very proud of her for that. Well, I don't blame you. And Jim, before we probably go. Probably a generation skipping thing. Generation skipping thing. Probably. Oh, absolutely. I told her if I had your ability when I was your age, I'd be a billionaire. Yeah, instead of the whatever a unary you are now. I Yes, I'm a, I'm a 10 heir. <laughs> Jim, if someone wants to talk to you about Stratus for their office, how do they get a hold of you? Actually, two ways. They can contact me directly at 402-598-9392. Or just jump on to stratusclean.com. Anna, are you going to be at uh, Audi Omaha today? I am. Yep, we're going to be selling cars today, and uh, it's going to be great. Let me guess, you're having a sale. We might be having a sale, you know. We have a sale, but you can (laughs) you and NFM test drive an Audi. Absolutely, stop on in. All right, so Jim Morrison uh, of Stratus Building Solutions, Anna Morrison of uh, Audi Omaha, thanks for joining us, and we appreciate you being our business feature this week. Thank you. Thanks for having us. All right, we're going to take our middle of the show break, and when we come back, we're going to talk to to all of you who have anything whatsoever to do with the commercial real estate construction development industry. The uh, annual commercial real estate summit is coming up about, I don't know, well over a thousand people uh, go to this thing. And we're going to talk with uh, Jerry Slusky and Chris Menzinger. They are the uh, coordinators and organizers of this event. And even if you're not in commercial real estate, you're going to find it interesting because so much happens um, at this event coming up later in the month. So stick with us. You're going to want to hear that. We'll also have your Noddle Company's commercial real estate development spotlight right on the other side of the break. In the meantime, please know that you are listening to Grow Omaha, brought to you by Dingman's Collision Center, along with Cheer Athletics on News Radio 1110 KFAB. And welcome back to the show. Jeff Beal sitting next to Trent and Maggot. We are brought to you by Dingman's Collision Center, along with Cheer Athletics, the nation's number one all-star cheer gym. If you have a little bit of uh, a little bit of denting and bruising and scratching and scraping on your automobile, remember Dingman's Collision Center. They have four metro area locations: Northwest Omaha, 144th and Industrial Road Southwest, Downtown Papillion, and Saddle Creek and Midtown. They're all great. They all help you, and they do a fantastic job. Been in the business, and they are. Uh, the Best of Omaha Frequent Award winner because everyone loves them and everyone loves the results they they give while treating people fairly and charging a very competitive price. Dingman's Collision Center, one of our sponsors. It's time, ladies and gentlemen, for your commercial real estate development spotlight of the week, which is brought to you by who? Noddle Companies. Noddle Companies. They are one of the premier developers in the United States, and they're based right here in Omaha. They do a lot of developments around the country, but here in Omaha, famous for big developments like Exarban Village, Builders District, River's Edge, many, many others. And they're no stranger to corporate headquarters. Uh, in the last several years, they've done uh, Valmont's global headquarters in Hartwood Preserve near Boys Town. Uh, they did HDR's global headquarters in the heart of Exarban Village. Big time developer. They do a great job. All their stuff is super high quality, and they're always on the cutting edge looking at doing more and more things. Well, today we're going to talk about their Builders District uh, area. This is the development they did that that is kind of anchored by Kiewit's, there we go, another global headquarters that they did, Kiewit's global headquarters. But you also have... Um, Oh, there's a Cambria Suites Hotel there. A uh, couple other new fun and thing, exciting things that are going in that area. The pocket Park. And that is getting really close. Yeah, they got a big screen in there. Yeah, that's getting close to opening. So the Pocket Park is between 16th and 17th, south of Cumming. Uh, not right south of Cumming. There's a little bit of stuff where they're eventually going to build some buildings. 
But then there's that little pocket park. And when it's all said and done, it's going to be somewhat analogous to uh, their fun outdoor area in Exarban Village, where you can do all those fun and exciting things right there in the middle of Exarban Village. That's almost ready in the Builders District. Also, just to the west of the Builders District, and and kind of tied into it in a lot of ways, Creighton University is going hog wild crazy with development. Uh, they've got um, a a space on the or a big square block on the north side of coming where they're going to kind of put their new maintenance and storage area. Um, then uh, just east of their dental college, construction has started on their sophomore residence hall, which is going to kind of take up a block there. And then just to the east of that, they have a lot of uh, the area fenced off. That's where their baseball and softball fields are going to go, which the College World Series teams will use for practice in a couple of years. That whole Builders District, Creighton University area, exciting, a lot of stuff happening. Really coming together. Well, we're going to bring on uh, some friends of ours, uh, Jerry Slusky and Chris Menzinger. Uh, they are the um, organizers, coordinators, planners of the Commercial Real Estate Summit. Absolutely huge industry event coming up Friday, August 23rd at the CHI Health Center, Omaha. Uh, Jerry and Chris, good morning and welcome to the show. Good morning. Good morning. How are you guys? Good. We appreciate you joining us. And, uh, you know, a lot of our listeners have something to do with the real estate or development industry. So they're going to be very curious about this. Give us a quick overview of what's going to be happening at the Commercial Real Estate Summit this year. Chris, go ahead. Well, this is, I'll brag for Jerry a little bit, this is Jerry's 35th summit. Um, Jerry started this when he was 12, and he is now in his 35th year. And uh, we're really excited to uh, celebrate Jerry and what he's created here. Um, I think we all know what a big day it is. Just all of us getting together, we'll have nearly a thousand people in the room. Uh, it's, it's a funny time right now. I think with interest rates and costs, um, it's been an interesting year. And so it's been an interesting planning for the 35th year. We have a theme of patience and persistence. And we're going to talk about interest rates a lot through the day, whether that be at a breakout panel, speaking specifically about office or industrial or the legal environment or the environment and the insurance industry and how that affects us. Um, we've got this, this theme of patience and persistence and, and a high focus on, on where interest rates are right now. So, yeah, uh, and I thought, I thought about this just a little bit. Uh, over the years, we teach each other in commercial real estate in the Nebraska area, and it's paid off with all the success of Omaha, Lincoln, and, and the state of Nebraska over the last 35 years, I think. And I'm, I'm kind of proud of the fact that people in our industry, no matter which part they're in, engineer, developer, broker, lender, or whatever, uh, they, they step up. Every year when we come up with a subject that seems to be important, uh, we reach out to our industry participants and professionals, and they step up and uh, put together some really amazing hot topics, if you will, that help everybody in the industry improve and work through, as Chris mentioned, difficult times for commercial real estate like we're in right now. So. We're proud of that, and we're happy to present it for the 35th year. And uh, I've been going for over 30 years, and uh, it really captures the essence of, of what's happening. And also, uh, the CRE Summit's forward-looking, so um, there's something for everyone. You don't have to be in commercial real estate, per se, to to attend it. Uh, Chris, uh, what is the date, and um, what do people need to do to sign up? Yeah, so the date... It's Friday, August 23rd, and you can go to our website, um, CRE Summit. Let me make sure I give it to you Is correctly. it attend CRE Summit.com? It's attend CRE Summit.com. Thank you. You can go there and sign up. And if you have any questions, we there's some, some information right on the website there that will give you probably everything you need. Um, the agenda is on there, so you'll understand kind of the full day's programming, which is anywhere from main stage, for, you know, conversations to breakout sessions where you can pick what applies to you most to how you have most interest in um we've got a keynote speaker over the lunch hour 
and a happy hour to end the day. Hey, uh, one more minute with uh, Jerry Slesky and Chris Menzinger from the Commercial Real Estate Summit. You mentioned the keynote speaker and all that. I was particularly intrigued by your closing general session, which is going to talk about uh, construction of some of our big blockbuster projects going on right now. Can you give us a quick 30-second synopsis of that? Yeah, sure. The uh, What we're doing is we're recognizing the fact that these big projects uh, have a huge impact on our region. Uh, and so we're identifying the airport. We have airport representatives coming to present what's going on, what's going to be going on. We have Mutual of Omaha of representatives showing where they're at in the new tower. And when that will be done, it will be impact on the community. And then certainly UNMC can't uh, be... Uh, left out because their expansion and their addition of employees has been tremendous. So those three will close the program, and I, I think it'll be very exciting and very uh, interesting to hear. Well, it's called the Commercial Real Estate Summit. Trent and I have been attending it regularly for years and years. And if you have anything to do with that industry, strongly recommend it. Friday, August 23rd, come, uh, at CHI Health Center Omaha. Jerry Slusky and Chris Menzinger, uh, thank you for all of the hard work you do to make our local industry better. And uh, good luck with this year's summit. Thank you for having us. Thanks, guys. All right, the Commercial Real Estate Summit coming up later this month. Going to take our final break of the hour, and you know what that means. When we come back, it's time for what you've been waiting for. That's my long list of things. For the Perkins Kreitzer Construction Lightning Round, in which we talk about a lot of things in a very short period of time. Coming right up, you're listening to Grow Omaha, brought to you by Dingman's Collision Center and Cheer Athletics on News Radio 1110 KFAB. It's time for your Perkins Kreitzer Construction Lightning Round, brought to you appropriately enough by Perkins Kreitzer Construction, full service general contractor based here in Omaha, uh, doing projects in the greater region out to North Platte, up to Sioux City, and environs all over this area. Dave Kreitzer leads the team over there. Uh, do a great job, you know, with projects being done properly with the right budget. A very talented group of uh, professionals that have so much experience working as part of the Perkins Kreitzer construction team. Got to tell you, yesterday I took a walk um, the new west side of the Miracle Hills area, west side of 114th Street, uh, just north of Dodge. Uh, Perkins Kreitzer has been uh, renovating that uh, retail strip over there. And uh, it's about done. I mean, it's pretty much done. So I had to go walk and take a look. And, uh, you know, uh, we've we've talked a few weeks ago about Funny Bone Comedy Club is moving in there along with a very popular uh, bar arcade business called Barcade. And um, very exciting. So I had to go look at that space where Funny Bone is going. It looks really cool. Just a heck. I mean, that is a night and day difference. And I know, believe me, because Trenton and I used to have an office uh, right there in that area. And to see uh, the job that Perkins Kreitzer did uh, bringing that uh, center back to life and making it look so nice is awesome. If you want to use them for your project, uh, just look them up online, p-cconstruction.com. Woo, all right, let's go through the list, big list. Um, we have Via Farina, uh, the Italian restaurant in uh, Little Italy uh, near uh, 10th and Pacific. They've announced a second location opening in October in Regency. It's actually Regency Landing, 107th and Pacific. And Trenton, here's a blast from the past. Remember Quizno Subs? Yeah, uh, it was Jay Gordon and Bob Gordon, his dad, and Bob Hafner, and I did some locations for them. At one time, they had nearly 5,000 locations nationwide. Then they fell on hard times. Now they're coming back. They re-entered the market. Uh, they are re-entering the market. They have like a miniature Quiznos inside the Pump and Pantry convenience store just west of Nebraska Crossing in Gretna. Uh, New York-style pizza fans, you'll be happy to hear this. Frank's Pizzeria officially reopened its Capital District location downtown. That's at 11th and Capitol Avenue. New ownership. They closed back in January. There's a sabbatical. But uh, now they are back. A sabbatical with a new owner, even. Happy Mango Bakery recently opened in La Vista, 96th and Giles, near Ref's Sports Bar. Uh Nice bakery where you can order things, but that you can walk in and, you know, kind of get carry out things um, right there, just like a cookie shop, if you will. Board and Brush is a sip and paint woodworking studio. Sip and paint means they give you cocktails while you're doing creative stuff. A lot of times people like to do this on a date or, uh, you know, maybe a outing of friends. But this or is things woodworking, like that. it's not canvas? 
It says Sip and Paint Woodworking Studio. I, I only say what I see in print. Excellent. Uh, national franchise, 300 locations in 43 states. Oasis Cigar Bar is coming to City Center. That's that newly built downtown in La Vista along 84th Street. By the Astro. Very close to the Astro, just adjacent to it. A little over 4,000 feet. Uh, interior build-out is underway. That's big. Shocking news. A Scooter's Coffee plans to open. <laughs> a new kiosk drive through location uh, just a little bit northeast of 204th and Q. Yeah, we need more Scooters. Opening date still to be determined. We also have Ziggy's Coffee under construction in that area, so a lot of, a lot of coffee going it's in that really area. It's a business. Ziggy's Coffee is a Perkins Kreitzer construction project. Aldi uh, is going to open a store in Gretna, part of the Gretna Landing Development, 193rd and Highway 370. Um, it's going to be a while because they have to build it and all that, but all you Aldi fans in Gretna will be happy about that. Pandora Jewelry plans to open a store soon at Village Point Shopping Center. It's under development between Lululemon and Kendra Scott. That's just west of Shields. Pandora designs, manufactures, and markets hand-finished and contemporary jewelry. Also, I think you're going to have a, I think it's called Medi's, but it's, I think it's a Mediterranean restaurant that's going to take the old Gunderson space. Really? Uh, that sounds uh, that sounds pretty pretty exciting. That's a uh, uh, chain or local? I think it's a chain. Okay. More there to come. Go. Okay. That's why you listen to Gromaha yeah. and, and get our, get on Gromaha.com. Construction is underway on a future Dollar Street a Dollar Tree store at 192nd Avenue, just a little bit uh, north of West Center Road. It's uh, just northwest of an existing Comfort Suites Hotel and Laszlo's Don't Brewery. They have like 15 locations at Omar, something crazy like that. They have 19. You're close. That is crazy. Yeah, it's interesting. You're seeing Dollar Tree go into more and more of what would be categorized as more upscale neighborhoods. Higher income neighborhoods. Yeah, same thing with Dollar Tree or uh, Dollar General and some my of their. Th- my theory is, is that. Normal, regular stores, uh, the candles are so freaking expensive that you have to go to Dollar Tree to get dollar candles. Is that a thing? Dollar candles? Is that a thing? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, After two years in operation, Control Coffee and Cereal Bar will unfortunately close its downtown Omaha location. Uh, not not far from 10th and Pacific. August 18th is the last day. This is due to slower traffic during the school year. They do pretty well the rest of the year. But uh, they were all open up a location in Lincoln for all of you who are fans of the place. That's it. We're out of here. I'm Jeff Beals. And I'm Trenton Maggot. You've been listening to Grow Omaha, brought to you by Dingman's Collision Center, along with Cheer Athletics and Perkins Kreitzer Construction. We'll chat with you next week at 9 o'clock right here on News Radio 1110 KFAB. If you like this video, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. And remember, Grow Omaha is not just media. This is a mission. We are trying to build up Omaha and make it an even better place. We can only do that with your help. Share this video with your friends, neighbors, and family.